Today you're going to be doing a lab called the camera lab and we're going to look at how lenses uh, refract light and learn something about how cameras work. So uh, this is a fun one. I wish you were here to do it with me, but uh, I'm going to demonstrate it for you today. Here we go. Today you're going to be doing a lab uh, that I think is one of the most interesting labs that we do and it's unfortunate that uh, you're not all here to do the lab yourselves, but um, I'm going to demonstrate it for you today. So it's called the camera lab and we're going to see how a camera actually works. We won't make a real camera, but we'll make a simulated camera that shows you how a camera works. It actually is also very similar to how your eye works and uh, we'll compare the camera to the eye. So we're going to look at a diagram here to compare what the camera and the eye are like. So let's quickly just look at this diagram. And you can see here, this is the camera on the left side and then the eye on the right side. Uh, and there's an object in the center that the camera and the eye are both looking at. Now, as the light passes into the camera, the first thing it's gonna go through is this lens. And do you know what kind of lens that is? That's right, it's a convex lens because it's thicker in the middle and thinner at the edges. Same with the eye. Well, it's, the light is going to go through a convex lens that is thicker in the middle and thinner at the edges. And what happens to light as it enters through a convex lens? You guessed it. The light is uh, converged. Um, and as the light passes through, it's going to uh, go through something called the diaphragm or an aperture uh, that lets light in and changes the amount of light that go in. Same with the iris in your eye, it's gonna change its size to let more or less light in. And then there's also, in the case of a camera, there's a shutter that can be open and closed to uh, let no light in and then let light through uh, in order to produce the image. The image that's produced forms uh, on a, a sensor that's in a camera called a CCD detector. And that's CCD stands for charged couple display. Uh, on In your eye, the image is formed on the back of the eye and that part's called what? You can tell me, I bet. That's right, it's called the retina. And that's where the image forms on your eye. So you can kind of compare the different parts of your eye to the parts of the camera. <clears throat> now we're going to uh, look at what uh, happens during this lab. So if we go through the lab, uh, it says here that a camera is a ba basic uh, device. It's very, very simple. And to make a camera, all you need is a convex lens, a screen, which is really the CCD detector in, in a real camera, a box to keep the light out, and a shutter to let light in uh, when you wish to open it up to let the light in. So why sometimes you take photos that are too dark or out of focus? Well, uh, we'll see why that happens in this lab. So we're going to investigate what happens uh, to focus a camera and then also we're going to see what happens to adjust the brightness of a photograph. And uh, a couple things just to note here, uh, there's definition of what refraction is. So that's when uh, light comes through some sort of material or media and the light bends as it moves through. Uh, and then lenses, well, what do lenses do? Well, when, when light hits a curved piece of material, clear piece of material, well, it refracts or bends as it moves through. And we're gonna look at how those are used in a camera. So a convex lens is what's used in a camera. And we're gonna look at that in more detail here. So it says a convex lens is a curved, uh, in, the, uh, in the center of the lens, has a curve in the center of the lens that's thicker um, than the sides. These lenses refract the light rays towards the center of the lens. For this reason, they're called converging lenses. A plain convex lens has one curved surface and one flat surface. A double convex lens has two curved surfaces. So in cameras and in your eye, you actually have a double concave, or sorry, convex lens, which is like the one in this diagram here, and they converge the light. So light rays that are parallel these light rays here are parallel, they're uh, right on top of each other. Uh, the light that passes through um, convex lenses is, is parallel and uh, it'll all be refracted to converge at a single point called the focal point. So this point right here, we've talked about this before, is called the focal point. And that's where the image is focused. 
only right, light rays that come uh, from an object that are very far or infinitely far, so as far away as possible, are always parallel, like uh, in this example here. When light rays come from an object that is closer than this, the rays are not parallel and do not converge at the focal point, but at some distance greater than the focal point from the lens. Where the light rays converge, a real image is formed, and the image is either a rector right side up or inverted upside down. So in the case of a distant uh, object, the image is going to be inverted or upside down. So this, in this experiment, we're going to see how a convex lens uh, can produce an image just like a camera or just like your eye. So we're going to go through the different parts here of, your, uh, of the lab that we're going to do. So you're going to have a meter stick and some meter stick holders. Uh, you're going to have a double convex lens, and in our case, we're going to use a magnifying glass. And you're going to use a candle, a screen holder, um, a screen, and then an aperture, which is just a piece of black paper with uh, two different sized holes in it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the two meter sticks onto the holders and set up the uh, candle at one end of the meter stick. So that's the first part of our lab here. We're going to determine what the focal length of the convex lens is. So it says here what we're going to do. We're going to put the convex lens on the 50 centimeter mark of the uh, meter stick and then we're going to put the object marker, in our case the candle, on the meter stick a few centimeters away from the lens. And then uh, from the opposite end from the object here, just like in this diagram, I'm going to stand at the end, and you would have done this if you were in class, and you're going to look through the lens to determine where the focal length is. And we're going to move that, um, that lens until the uh, object flips over. So what we're going to do, and it says here to ask a partner, well, we can't really do that because uh, it's just me doing it. Um, so I'm going to try and do my best to get that done. So what I'll do is slowly move the object marker, the candle, away from the lens until we see that it flips over. And as soon as it, the image flips over and is upside down, what point have we reached? That's right, we've reached the focal point. As soon as you have a, an inverted image, you know that we've reached that focal point. Um, and that'll determine what our focal point is for our lens. And we'll write that down. So today we're going to measure the focal length of this lens in experiment number one. And uh, this is a convex lens. It's actually a magnifying glass, but convex lenses are the same kind of lens that we'll find in a camera. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out the focal length of this lens. Now, uh, how do I do that? Well, I'd have to know what the focal point is. So um, what is the focal point of a lens? That's right, it's the point where the light rays actually cross or converge all together in one point. Um, and what happens to the image at that point? If it was right side up at the focal point, it would now go upside down and flip over and be upside down. So as soon as that happens, I'll know I've reached the focal point of this lens. So I'm going to try and do that. So I'm going to place the lens at the 50 centimeter mark, and I'm going to slowly move the object, the candle, until I see it flipping over. And hopefully, I can do that. It's getting close. And now it's upside down. So I've determined what the focal length is. So there's our focal length, and I'm going to record that. So our distance from the 50 centimeter mark where the lens was to where the candle is now, the object, is 25 centimeters. So it's right on the 25 centimeter mark. So our focal length then is 25 centimeters. Now we're going to be looking at uh, experiment number two, and this is uh, the part where we get to see what a camera is actually like and how it works. And also, I guess, how your eye works as well, because they work in a similar way. 
So we're going to set up our camera so that we can actually do some measurements to see what happens to the size of our image based on how our lens is positioned. And so um, we're going to set it up just as our procedure here on our lab tells us. So it says put the convex lens, the magnifying glass, on the 50 centimeter mark of the meter stick. So our lens will go right in the center of our meter stick. And the second part says to place the screen in its holder. So here's our screen. We'll place it in the holder and we'll put it at the end of the meter stick. And then it says uh, have the millimeter markings running vertically. Well, I'm actually going to use a ruler instead of the millimeter markings. It'll just be a little easier. Uh, and then part three says on the opposite side of the lens from the screen, place the object. So the thing you want to take a picture of, or our object in this case, is our candle. Uh, and then it gives you some instructions here about what to do uh, and, and then also make sure you get don't get wax on yourself. Um, you're not going to have to worry about that because, well, I'm doing the experiment and unfortunately you don't get to do it this year, but you can watch it. Uh, it is a fun lab and I'm sorry you guys missed out on it. Uh, okay, so with number four here, it says we're going to start at 2F. So it says move the object to a distance that is exactly 2F from the lens. What does that mean, 2F? That's right, it means two times the focal length because it's double the focal length. So F stands for the focal length and 2F is double that. So then we're going to move the lens until the image is focused. So we're going to put our, um, our uh, object at two times that focal length. Well, our focal length was 25 centimeters, so we're going to put it at 50 centimeters. From the, from the lens. Now, uh, number five says record the following information in your data table. So I'm going to actually show you the data table just to make sure that this makes more sense. So if we scroll down here, we've got our data table. It's table one. And we're going to record information for these different distances. And we're going to look at the object distance to start with. So the object distance is the distance between the object, which is our candle, so the distance from our candle to our lens. That's the, that uh, distance is called the object distance. The second thing we're going to record is the object height, and that's the height of our object. So we're going to look at the height of our candle. And I'm not going to measure the flame, I'll just measure the actual part of the wax of the candle. After we've done the object height, we're going to measure the ob or sorry the image distance. So that's the distance from the image. The image forms here on the screen. So that's our distance from the image to our lens. So that distance here between the two of them. And then the last uh, thing that we're going to measure is our image height. So we're going to take a ruler and we're going to put it up against the screen and measure how large the um, the candle is on our screen. Okay, so those are the different things we're going to record in the table. Um, and then we're, so we're going to do that for the 2F measurement. And then we're going to move the lens so that it's, um, or sorry, move the object so that it's now between 2F. Uh, so we're going to move it in between, a little bit closer to where the, uh, the screen would be. And we're going to do the same recording. We're going to record the object distance, the image distance, the object height, and the image height. And then we're going to move the, the uh, object again so that it's at F, so right at the focal length or focal distance. Okay, and then do the same measurements again. And then we're going to compare what happens with those three measurements. Now we're going to do the second part of the experiment. And in this part, experiment number two, uh, we are going to measure um, the distance between the uh, lens and the object. So that's called the object distance. So we're going to look at what the distance is here, and we're starting right at the very end of the meter stick. So at the very end here, all the way to um, where the lens is. And we're at exactly two times the focal length, because we're at 50 centimeters. The focal length was 25 centimeters. Now we're also going to measure the uh, distance from the screen right here to 
the lens. And that distance is called the image distance because the image is going to form on the screen. So that's called the image distance. Um, then we're also going to measure the height of the object. So we're going to use a ruler here and we're going to measure the height of the object. And then we're also going to measure the height of the image that forms on our screen. So now what we're going to do is we're going to measure the uh, different parts of the lab. So we're going to start by putting the um, object, the candle, at two times the focal length. And I'm going to move the lens now until I get a focused image on the screen. So I can keep moving it this way. And eventually I should see an image that appears on the screen. So um, that's a good image. It's quite small, but you can see that the image of the uh, candle now, the object, is actually upside down, but it's focused. So I'm going to put the uh, lens down right on the, on the meter stick, and I'm going to determine what the distance is from the lens to the object, and that's the object distance. I'm going to look at the distance from the lens to the screen, and that's the image distance. And then I'm going to measure the height of the image uh, formed on the screen, and I'm going to measure the height of the object. So I'm going to start with the image just because that's probably the hardest one. So I'm going to measure that. And get it focused again. There we are. So I found that the height of the image, if I measure just the candle, not the flame, because the, <coughs> the flame changes um, size sometimes. So I found that it is 0.75 centimeters. Now, I'm going to record that on my sheet. So for two times the focal length, that's 2f. Our image height is 0 0.75 centimeters. Okay, so we'll get it focused again. Now I'm going to measure the actual distance from the uh, image, or the screen in this case, to the lens. So let's use the ruler. That'll make it a little easy. You could also use the meter stick. So that image distance is 20, 20, exactly 20 centimeters. Then I'm also going to record what the object distance was, or sorry, the, yeah, the object distance. So that's the distance from the lens all the way to the object, the candle. Well, it's right on 80 here, and this is at zero. So the object distance then is 80 centimeters. The object distance is going to be 80 centimeters. And the object height, well, we'll measure the height of the object. In this case, it is 2 centimeters. And our object height is 2 centimeters. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to move the, uh, the candle so that it's between 2F and so two times the focal length and the focal length. The focal length was uh, 25 centimeters. So we'll move it here a little closer. And we'll see if we can get an image forming. So I've got one now. And if I measure it, it's right on 75. So our distance then is 25 centimeters for our image distance. The measurement for our image distance uh, between two times the focal length and the focal length is 25 centimeters. And if I put it right on there again, it's a 75 mark. I'm going to measure the distance here. So it is at 25 to 75. So that actually gives me 50, 50 centimeters for my uh, object distance. Object distance with this measurement is 50 centimeters. My object height. So we're still at two. Our object height is two centimeters again. Now let's see what our image height was. So we put it at 75 and it's one centimeter. And our image height 
This time is one centimeter. So it's getting a little larger, our image height. Okay, so that's at two times the focal length and uh, also between two times the focal length and the focal length. We're gonna be moving the object now so that we're at the focal length. And we're gonna see what happens when we try and find the image. I moved it a little too close and now it won't focus. So I'm gonna move it back a bit. Now it's closer than it was before. And this one is at 33 and that one's at 60. We should have 27 for our um, object distance. At the focal length at F, our object distance is 27 centimeters. And let's check out our object height. Again, it's at two centimeters. It's two centimeters. Again, it seems to be staying the same, which kind of makes sense. It might be changed by millimeters, but uh, generally it's staying exactly the same. Now let's see what our image distance is. So our image distance is at 63, and so that would mean that we have 37 as our image distance. And our image distance is 37 centimeters. And our image height, let's measure it. So we are at three centimeters. And our image height uh, is three centimeters. So the image height seems to be increasing as our uh, object distance gets smaller. And or as our image distance gets larger, the image height is increasing. So now what we're going to do is uh, decide what happens to the image um, in terms of its size compared to the object. And we're also going to fill in the column that decides whether the image was upside down or whether it was right side up. So uh, if we look at uh, the first row here where it says two times the focal length, well, if we look at the image height, in this case, it was decimal 75 centimeters. And if we compare that to the object height over here, which is two centimeters, well, what do you notice about the size of the image? Is it reduced, which would mean smaller, and large, which would mean bigger, or the same size? That's right, it's reduced. So we're going to type that in here. And if we look at the next one, the next uh, row here, which is between two times the focal length and the focal length, well, the object height is still two centimeters, and the image height is one centimeter. So it is reduced. And if we compare the size of the image at the focal length, well, it's three centimeters and the actual object height is two centimeters. So in this case, the uh, image is enlarged. So you can kind of see a bit of a pattern there as, it, as the uh, image gets larger um, as you move uh, towards the focal length. Now, uh, for the image, whether it's right side up or upside down, in all our cases, the image was uh, upside down. So we say it's inverted. So what kind of image was produced then if it was inverted? Can you guess? That's right, it's a real image that gets produced on the screen. Now the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at what happens to the uh, amount of light that hits the, uh, hits the screen and how bright the image is uh, depending on what size hole we have here. So we have different size holes. We've got one larger hole and one smaller hole. These are called the aperture and that's how a camera would let light in. So let's see what happens if we put the image in front of the bigger hole. We'll move this back a bit here. So we'll get a nice focused image. And then we're going to put the larger hole in front here. So let's see what happens. So there's the image of the larger hole. There's with the smaller hole. 
So I don't know if you can see that on camera, but for sure with the, with the larger hole, with the larger hole, the image is brighter and it's dimmer with the smaller hole. You're going to use all the information in this table to answer some questions in a Google form that I'll assign to you in Google Classroom. Uh, and uh, I'll also include this table in your, um, in your Google form at the top so that you can use it while you're answering the questions. That was our camera lab and I uh, hope you learned something about how cameras work and how uh, lenses work to refract light. Uh, we'll see you again in a bit. See you soon. Bye.